Hello everyone. Today we are going to draw the surface development of the truncated cone and we have the question to make a complete orthographic drawing of the solid frustum cone cut by a plane as shown in the given figure and find the true shape of the section and draw the lateral surface development of the lower portion of the solid. And before doing this question, let's know something about the surface development. So what is surface development? Surface development is the unfolding of a 3D object and that object should be hollow and it should be made up of a thin sheet. So when we cut that object from one side and unfold the sheet completely, then the shape of that unfolded sheet is called development of the lateral surfaces or surface development. Now I'm going to start with this top view and we can see that there is two circles here which are the concentric circles of diameter 56 and diameter 28. So I'm going to start with this top view. So first of all, I'm going to make a circle of diameter 56. So I have already made a circle of diameter 56 and now we can also make this another circle of diameter 28 by the help of this same center. So I have made this circle of diameter 28 and I'm going to make the center line in this circle like this. We can easily make these center lines in the center of the circle and I'm going to place the x and y axis which is at a distance of 10 mm away from this is point and I have assumed that our object is 10 mm away from the reference axis so I have placed a line which is 10 mm away from this reference axis like this and I'm going to make this front view at a distance of 10 mm away from this central axis now to make this baseline, we have to project the line coming from this point number one, that is A's of this diameter. So I'm going to project a line from this point number one to the front view like this. And I need to project a line from this point number two to the front view as well like this. So this point represents the point number one and this point represents the point number two. So we have made this baseline and we can see that the height of this truncated cone is 40. So I'm going to make a line of 40 mm from this point. So we can make this horizontal line which is 40 mm up from this baseline. Now we have to project the line from this point as well as this point. I have projected the line from this A's of this smaller circle like this to the top. And I have also projected the line coming from this point to the top. So we have easily located these two points and I'm going to join these four points. In this way we can easily join these four lines. And the front view of this cone will look like this. It will take the shape of the trapezium. And we have to place this cutting plane. And we can see that this cutting plane is at a distance of 7 mm from this point. So we have to make a line which is 7 mm away from this point. So I have placed this point over here. We can make a line which is inclined at an angle of 30 degree with this base. And we have to extend it downwards so that it cuts the cone. So this line represents the cutting plane which is inclined at an angle of 30 degree with the base. And we have to make the part below the cutting plane dark whereas the part above the cutting plane should be represented by the light line. So I'm going to make these lines a little bit lighter. Now we have to divide this bigger circle into 8 equal parts. And in order to divide this circle into 8 equal parts, I'm going to make a line of angle. 45 degree from this baseline. We can easily make this line at an angle of 45 degree with this baseline and we can extend this line to this side also. Similarly, we can also make a line at an angle of 45 degree from this side like this and we can see that this line is inclined at an angle of 45 degree with this baseline and we can extend this line downwards in this side like this. In this way, we have easily divided this circle into eight equal parts. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We need to give notation to all of these points so that it will be very easy for us to visualize these points in the 3D. So this represents the top view of the cone and this center represents the apex of this cone. Whereas these lines from the apex to the base represents the generators. So they are projected from this center that is the apex of the cone to the baseline. Before projecting these eight points to our front view, I'm going to make this upper portion of the cone which has already been cut because it will be very easy for us to to draw these points in our front view for this we need the apex of this cone so I'm going to make this upper portion of this cone so I'm going to extend this line and this line and find the intersection of these two lines in this way I have located this apex of the cone and I have represented this cut portion by the help of the dotted lines 
and I have represented this point as point O. So after locating this apex of the cone, I'm going to project all these eight points to the base of this cone. So I'm going to project the line coming from this point number eight such that it coincides the point number two and it will touch at this point like this. And from the front view, this point number two and point number eight will be located at the same point. So this point represents the point number two as well as point number eight. Similarly, I have projected the line from this point number one and we have already made this line. So this point represents point number one. We have already projected the line from this point number seven and point number three to our front view. You can see this line and it has intersected the base at this point. So this point represents the point number three as well as point number seven because both of these points have been projected from a single line and it will touch front view at the same point. So this point represents both point number three and point number seven. Now we need to project the line coming from this point number six and point number four such that it touches this baseline. So this point represents the point number four and point number six. And we have also projected the line from this point number five to the base. So this point represents the point number five. In this way, we have projected all these eight points in this baseline. Now we need to project lines coming from this point number two and eight to the apex of the cone. So we need to make a line coming from this point to the apex of this cone. Also join this four, six and this apex of the cone like this. And also join the line coming from this point number three and seven to this apex of the cone. In this way, I have joined all these three projectors up to this apex of the cone. This is the top view of the cone and it has been divided into eight equal parts like this. The front view of the cone will look like this. It will take the shape of the triangle from the front view. And I have divided this circle into eight equal parts like this. And all these lines are coming from the center and they are joining the base of the circle. So these lines are known as the generators. These lines have been generated from the apex of the cone and they are joining the base of the cone. So there are eight generators namely 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03 and so on. But our cone has been cut by the cutting plane like this which is inclined at an angle of 30 degree so our cone will look like this after cutting and this is the 3d view of the truncated cone the cone has already been cut by the cutting plane which is at an angle of 30 degree so it will look like this now we need to generate the true shape of this section that we can see in this upper surface of the cone and first of all, we have to generate all these points of the cone in our top view. So first of all, I'm going to name the points that lies in this cutting plane from this point to this point. So I have marked this point as point number A where the generator 01 and this cutting plane has intersected. So we have to project this point number A to our top view. For this, we have to project a line coming from point number A such that it intersects the generator 01. So I have projected the line coming from this point number A to the top view such that it intersects the generator 01 and these two lines intersect at this point so it represents point number A. So I'm going to mark this point as point number A. Now I'm going to mark this point as point number B that lies in generator 02 and we know that this line indicates two generators that is 0, 02 and 0, 08 which is seen at the same point from the front view so i'm going to mark this point as point number b and point number j point number b lies in the generator 0, 02 and point number j lies in the generator 0, 08 so i'm going to repeat the same step again i'm going to project this point to the top view and we have marked this point B which lies in the generator 02. So we have projected a vertical line coming from this point number B to our top view and this line has intersected the generator 02 at this point. So this point represents point number B. Similarly this point J lies in the generator 08. So we have projected a vertical line coming from this point number Z to the top view and it has intersected this generator 08 at this point. So this point represents the point J from the top view. Similarly, I'm going to mark this point as point number C and point number I. Point number C lies in the generator 03, whereas point number I lies in the generator 07. However, these two generators will be seen from the same point in our front view. So I have represented this point as point number C and point number I. 
now the next thing we have to do is to project a vertical line from these points to the top view but this line has already been projected it hasn't intersected the generator 03 and 07 so it will be difficult for us to find these points in the top view so to locate these points in the top view i have projected a horizontal line coming from these points so that it touches this edge of the cone and i'm going to project a line coming from this point to the top view in this way i have projected a horizontal line and i have also projected a vertical line that intersects the edge of this cone now place your compass at this point and place another leg of the compass at this point then make arc from this point to this point and it will intersect at the generator 07 and 03 and these two points will represent the actual location of the point C and I. So I have made an arc like this and we can see that this arc has touched generator 07 at this point. So this point represents point number I because the point number I lies in generator 07. So this point represents point I and this point represents the point C because the point C lies in the generator 03. So this is our generator 03 and this point will be our point number C. Now I'm going to mark this point as point number D and point number H. Our inclination has end at this point so I'm going to project this point as well in our top view and I'm going to name it as D and H and before projecting these two points in our top view we always need a generator and these two points are not lying in any generator so I'm going to produce a new generator such that it touches this apex of the cone and these points and it is extended to the base of the cone and this represents our new generator that is touching the point D and H and it is joining the apex of the cone. So I'm going to name this point as 910 at the base and we need to produce this generator in our top view also. So for this we have to project a vertical line from this base point to the top view. I have projected this vertical line and it has touched the circumference of the top view at this point and this point. So I'm going to mark this point as point number 9 and this point as point number 10. And I'm going to join this point to the center of the circle. Similarly, I'm going to join this point to the center of the circle. So I have made these two generators 010 and 09 like this. So after making these two generators, it will be very easy for us to project this point D and point H. So always remember to make a generator in the case of the cone. In this case, point D lies in the generator 09, that is this generator and the point H lies in the generator 010. So I'm going to project a vertical line like this. And this vertical line has intersected the generator 09 at this point. So this point represents the point number D because the point D lies in the generator 9. So this point represents our point number D and this point represents point number H. So we are going to repeat the same step again for this point number E and point number Z. And these two points lies in the generator 04 and 06. So project a vertical line from this point to the top view. And we know that this point E lies in the generator 04 and this point G lies in the generator 06 that is this generator. So this vertical projection has intersected the generator 06 at this point. So this point indicates point number G because point G lies in the generator 06. Similarly this vertical line has intersected the generator 04 at this point. So this point represents the point number E because E lies in the generator 04. So this point represents the point number E. And finally, I'm going to mark this point as point F. This point F lies in the generator 05. And this point has already been projected downward. So it intersects the generator 05 at the edge of this smaller circle. So this point represents the point number F. Now we have placed all these points in our top view. So we need to join all these points. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I and end it to A and we have to make a smooth curve at this point. So our sectional top view will look like this and while hatching this part, we should not hatch this part. So we should hatch only this part that has been cut by our section plane and in the 3D it will look like this. So we can clearly see that this lower portion has been cut but this upper portion hasn't been cut by the section plane. So we do not need to hatch the corresponding top view of this portion, that is this portion. So it will look like this in 3D. Now we need to develop the true shape of this section. For this we have to project a perpendicular line which is perpendicular to this plane. 
So I'm going to project a perpendicular line from this point number A which is perpendicular to this plane. Similarly, I'm going to project the line which is perpendicular to this point, this point, this point. Now we need to develop the true shape of this portion only because this portion represents this portion and this upper portion resembles the true shape of the cone. So I'm going to make the true shape of this hatched portion only. So I have projected these four lines coming from the points A, B, C and D only. And I have made these four lines which are perpendicular to this cutting plane. Now we have to make a line which is parallel to this cutting plane and extend it upward. So first of all we are going to project this point number A. And we can see that this point number A lies on this line. So I'm going to make point number A on this point like this. Now we have to locate this point number J and point number B. And these two points will lie on this line. So we have to locate the point number B and point number J over this line. And to find the true length of this point number J from this axis, we have to put one leg of the compass at this point and another leg of compass at this point. This line is equals to this line. Now with the same arc, put the compass leg at this point and make an arc at this point and this point. So these two arc will represent point number B and point number J. In this way, we have located the point number B and point number J. Similarly, we have to locate point number C and point number I along this line. For this, we have to find the true length of C and I from the top view. And we know that the true length is from the center to the point number I. So we have to put one leg of the compass at this point and another leg of compass at this point. Now measure this arc and without changing the arc you have to put the one leg of compass at this point and make the arc in this side and this side. In this way we have located this point number C and point number I. Now we have to locate the point number D and point number H along this line. For this we have to repeat the same steps again. We can measure the actual length of the point number D and point number H by the help of this vertical line. So the vertical length from this point to this point will give the actual position of point number H. So take one end of the compass at this point and another end of the compass at this point. And do not change the arc of that compass. Now by using that same arc, put one leg of the compass at this point and make an arc at this side and this side. So this point represents point number D and this point represents point number H. Now join all these points and make a smooth arc by using a French curve. Now we have developed the true section of the upper surface of the cone and represent it by using the hatch line. So it will look like this. Now we need to develop the lateral surface of the cone. Now we need to find the true length of the generator. And to identify the true length of the generator, we need to find the generator which is parallel to this XY line. And we can clearly see from the top view that the generator 05 is parallel to XY line. Similarly, the generator 01 is also parallel to XY line. So the generator 05 that is this length represents the true length of the cone. The generator 01 also gives the true length of the cone from the front view. Now put the one leg of the compass at this point and put another leg of compass at this point and measure this length. Then put one leg of the compass at this point and make an arc of the length which is equals to this generator 05. And we have the formula for the angle which is made by unflattening of cone equals to 360 into radius by slant height. And we have the radius of this bigger circle as 56 by 2 that is equals to 28. So the radius of the bigger circle is 28. And we also have the length of this slant height. We can measure it by the help of the scale from this point to this point. And from my figure, I have measured the slant height of this cone as 84. I can easily calculate the angle which is made by unflattening of cone which is equals to 120. So from this line as a baseline, I have to make an angle of 120 degree by using the protector. In this way, we can easily make this. Now to divide this surface into 8 equal portion, keep one leg of your compass at this point and another leg of compass at this point and measure this arc. The arc length between this point to this point is same for every generator that is from this point to this point. Similarly, from this point to this point, you will get the equal arc length. It means that these are the true length between these two points. So by the help of that same arc length, bring one leg of the compass at this point and make an arc by the help of that arc length at this point. 
again you have to put one leg of your compass at this point and by the help of that same arc make an arc at this point and after getting the arc up to this point you have to join those arcs to the apex of this cone so we have divided the cone into eight equal parts we have to locate all these points in our surface so first of all i'm going to name all these generators in this way i have named all these generators this is one two three four five six seven eight and it again ends at one point now we have to locate point number a along this line that is zero one and for this we have to find the true length of all these points we have already found out that this 05 is the true length of the surface so we have to project all these points to the generator 05 so i'm going to generate all these lines horizontally to the generator 05 in this way i have generated this line from point a point b point c and there is already a horizontal line in this point d to this true length so first of all we are going to look at this point number f which is located in this generator 05 so in this generator 05 i'm going to locate point number f which will be somewhere over here so you have to put one leg of your compass at this apex and you have to place another leg of compass at this point so by the help of that arc come to this apex of the cone and make the same arc length in the generator 05 so you'll get an arc at this point so this point represents point number f now I'm going to locate this point number E and point number G which is located in the generator 4, 6. And we can see that in the generator 0, 4 the point E lies. That is the point E will lie somewhere along this line. So place one end of the compass at this point and another end of the compass at this point because this point gives the true length of the point OE. And again take your compass and place one end of the compass at this point. And by the help of that same arc, mark an arc at this point. So you will get point number E. Similarly, by the help of that same arc, make an arc along this generator 06 also because we will get point number G at this point. Now I'm going to look at this point number C and point number I which will lie along generator 3 and 7. That is this line and this line. Again, take one end of the compass at this point and another end of the compass at this point because this point point represents the true length of this point so by the help of this arc place one end of the compass at this point make an arc at this point and this point so you will get point number c and i again repeat the same steps to locate point number b and point number j along the line to it so first of all take one end of compass at this point and another end of compass at this point and by the help of that arc place one end of compass at this point and make an arc at this point and this point so we will get point number b and point number j again repeat the same step for point number a place one end of compass at this point and another end of compass at the true length of a that is up to this point and by the help of that arc place one end of compass at this point and another end at this point so you can easily make an arc in this point and this point so you will get point number a along generator 01 but we haven't located two generators that we produced that is generator 9 and generator 10 so we need to make generator 9 and 10 along this arc and we can get the true length of the two generators by the help of this circumference of the circle so place one in of the compass at point number six and place another leg at point number 10 so by the help of this arc go to point number 6 and make an arc at this point so you will easily get the generator 10 and we can see from this circumference that generator 10 lies in between 6 and 7 so I have made this generator between 6 and 7 now we can easily extend a line from this point number O to this base like this now we also need to make the generator 9 so you have to place one leg of the compass at point number four and make an arc up to this point. So by the help of that arc, place your compass at point number four and make an arc in this side. So you'll get point number nine. In this way, we can make this arc easily and extend a line coming from this point to this apex of the cone. Now we have to locate point number D and point number H along the generator 9 and 10. So place one end of the compass at this point and another end of the compass along this point because this point represents the true length of this points D and H. So by the help of that arc, 
place one end of the compass along this point and make an arc along the generator 9 and generator 10. Now join all these lines so that you will get a smooth curve. So you'll get this kind of the curve. In this way we have developed the lateral surface of this truncated cone. Now we have to place the actual shape of the base as well as the upper surface of our cone. So we know that the lower base is a circle of diameter 56. So we can easily make a circle of diameter 56 in this lower portion. So I'm going to extend this line like this and place the circle at this point like this. And again I'm going to extend this line in the upward direction like this and make a line which is perpendicular to this line. Now we have to make this a shape over here also. So assume that this line represents this line and mark a point A on this side. Now we have placed point A over here and measure this length by the help of the compass and place that arc over here and repeat the same step to measure the length from this point to this point and this point to this point. So you can easily locate all these points along this line. In this way we can easily mark this point, this point and this point. Now measure the length from this point to this point and mark the arc over here as well as here. Similarly, place your compass at this point and this point and measure this length and copy that length to this point. In this way you can easily make the true shape in this side. We have already made the true shape of this portion but the true shape of this circular portion is still left so we have to make the true shape of this circular portion at this side. So to make the true shape of this leftover circular portion we have to measure the length from this point to this point because this portion represents the true shape of the circle so it is very easy for us to measure the length from this point to this point and look at it in this point so by the help of that arc place your compass at this point and make an arc at this point so you can easily join these three points so this point represents point number f and we can easily make an arc by the help of the french curve in this way we have developed the true shape of the surface and we have also developed the lateral surface of this truncated cone. And if you like my video, please like, share and subscribe.